This is an interesting area. So, what can you tell me about this? Vulnerable to lightning. Handy. Make it wet. So let's... Okay. That takes care of one. Yeah. And... Let's exit turn base mode. The mission has to come first. I'm just waiting. Quietly. Alright, let's do turn base mode again. Have Shadow Heart. Just get that. Less going. Really? Watching and waiting. Oh, interesting. It still worked. Okay. You're making me sweat. Throw that water. Making it wet, Sharp as and then have Will come up. Keeping pace. So close. What is it? Can Astarian finish it off? Perhaps with a lightning or ice arrow. Three ice arrows, two lightning arrows. Path is interrupted. What's the story? Maybe Carlac will get lucky and do at least three points of damage? At least ten? But it is resistant, right? It is resistant to piercing and slashing. But not bludgeoning. So let's have her throw. The Great Club, which does not have the throwing tag, but maybe. Easy as. Here. Good enough. A long way to go still. All right, let's see what's on the uh, let, let's see what's in the area. All right, and then on this table over here, there is a letter to somebody named Ear by somebody named Lenore, who apparently the tower is empty with only somebody named Bernard inside and she waited for ear for quite a long time I gather and he never returned Lying. and then in this heavy chest skybreaker which comes with a searing sm smite ability not too bad. Oh, and it, and it is a thrown weapon. It's a thrown bludgeoning weapon. That is useful for a Karlak to have. What do we have here? Oh yeah, and it's a dirt mound that I noticed, but I didn't get around to because I was dealing with the turrets. We see it. We have a sight line here. And there's another turret. And if we look around, there's another turret. Let's go.
Can I get Will behind there? Let's go turn base mode. Have Will dash. Quiet as a mad bee. And maybe like right hey, no. there. Ready. Unseen. Oh, the other one sees him. Okay. So. Throw water. That's it. Have Will come over. Shocked in gasp. Sixteen. Will is kind of low on hit points. And I have a lot of potions of speed. Let's have Will drink one. And let's have him stay right there. Well, let's have him move over he here. Things out. Let's march. And then let's have Carlac also move that way. Okay. He can't quite get there. Best foot forward. We'll drink a potion though. Hey, good looking. Listen. There we go. Uh let's not expose ourselves any more than necessary. Whatever comes, I'm ready. A hero with heart. Okay, Kylak. Pop out. Throw the water. Have Will come out. Things out. And he's got a couple of lightning charges as well now. So hopefully this is a one shot. What comes now? I think I can get out of uh, turn base mode now. Broken machinery, light elixirs of lightning resistance. That might be something I want to make for. Uh, Will so he can start standing in water. Hmm. I can think of better places to enjoy literature than in the depths of the Underdark. So this book has the beginning lines of a play, and this stanza is circled. There is a light in every thing. It's crawling towards the surface to survive, and in its wake. It tramples everything. We'll kill the rest so that the one can thrive. Evil's Ascent. This door. Unseen. Magic from that chest. I can feel it. This chest, called the Chest of the Mundane, is very special. So you see, it has this junk in it. This junk weighs very, very little. 
The chest itself weighs like a hundred pounds. But if when we pick this up, that's right. this was different a moment ago. So it was a bowl, and now it's a hearth light bomb. A gold ingot. The cup is a scroll of mage armor. The mug. Mistress Grace, Boots of Featherfall. Which is a very nice thing to keep handy. And a scroll of protection from good versus evil. Now, the other Soldier. big thing about this chest, though, is that it works the other way, too. So, pick up that chest. And then that... The wooden crate, which weighs 10 pounds, turns into a mug or something. And like, they, they still are the things that they are, but their weight is drastically reduced in this chest. So... Oh. Wait, is the chest of the mundane no longer affecting... actually affecting the weights of the stuff that's inside? Okay, uh, I was wrong. The chest of the mundane was never meant to do that, apparently, and it has been patched and fixed, so it's basically a gimmick item. I must keep going. And then you can see there's this sort of area out here. And if you notice, there's almost a path of mushrooms that you can use to get down there. So let's have everybody come out here. Too far for you. Carla can get there. Who can follow Carla? Everybody, I just didn't jump from the right spot. Hmm. Onward in her name. And we'll take a little bit of damage coming down here. That might be worth a look. What now? I think we're okay. Let's try this way. Better take that. Something about 
about these flowers. Feels like my magic's wilting. Now, these scissor blooms are very useful things. Um, scissor anti-magic shield. They nullify nearby magic. You can pick them up. And then you sort of become a walking anti-magic field yourself. And one thing you can do with that, if you can sneak up to somebody and sort of reverse pickpocket them. So I could pickpocket Shadowheart, for instance, and place the Susser Bloom in their inventory. And then she would have it in her inventory, and she would be the source of the anti-magic field. So I think I would like to have Astarian hold on to both of these. And in some cases, when there appears to be a, a strong caster, that's one thing he can do, is sneak up to them and basically completely nullify them and then Karlak can go right up to that person without too much trouble because she doesn't use spells and the others can basically stay away from them unfortunately if you bring them outside of the underdark uh, they are immediately destroyed so you do have to be careful about that but but now we have this way into the bottom of the tower This book here, Treatise on the Antimagic Properties of Susser Tree Flowers. For those... Basically... Tells you a little bit about the Susser Flowers themselves. But... Also says that he's able to use the magical absorption of Susser Tree Flowers as a power source. And that is your clue that you can come over to here, what do we have to here? this power generator, where they also have withered blue petals nearby, which is what happens to your sus susier bloom if you ever take it outside of the Underdark. Let's have some fun. Well, Starany is the one who's holding on to it, so he can use one of these. to power up the generator. Which, if you haven't already destroyed the turrets, does shut them off.
comes now. Better fetch that. Better tread carefully. And then this gilded chest, just up the stairs from the basement, has a necklace of detect thoughts. Uh, certain parties could use that. I've never really okay. gotten into using detect thoughts, so I will probably do that on some run somewhere, just so I can see the additional see. dialogue options. I just haven't really done it yet. Perhaps on a wizard character. And then once the power supply, once the power generator has been powered on, you can use these buttons in the elevators to take you to other floors. Hmm. I need to concentrate. I find something useful. Everybody's gathered, ready to go up to the next level. And this is where we came in. So let us go up to the next level. There's a sight line here somewhere, so there is clearly something nearby to see. To see us, anyway. Keep low and quiet. Oh, well, something did see us and didn't care. To keep going. So I will continue taking stuff. The careful art of Tearson ciphers. An engraved disc of Githyanki origin containing a complex cipher that can decrypt ancient Gith dialects. A useful discovery if one should encounter such archaic writings. Well, I definitely want that. The silence stretches on. I'm all alone. Please can I hold your hands for just a while.
And interestingly enough, shortly after we found that Githyanki cipher, we found an engraved di Githyanki disc. Read. The disc is formed from slate and engraved with Githyanki writing. You examine them closely, but can't make much sense of them. Using the cipher you found, you might be able to reveal the disc's meaning. Uh, seek a pattern or use the cipher you found to decode the symbols. A pattern forms as you gaze at the disc, and from within that pattern, a story emerges. The Prince of the Comet, Part 1. So it was that we were free from gank shackles and turned our blades on each other. The heavens were shattered, and one great empire was divided in two. Gith traveled to the Hells to broker help for her people, her cause. Flacketh would have you believe Mother Gith proclaimed her our queen. Lies. Gith made no such proclamation. Flacketh seized the empire against the mother's wishes. But Gith had nurtured a son, Orpheus, prince of the comet, the true heir. He knew Vlacketh's treachery. Orpheus rallied Gith's honor guard and declared the throne for himself. The War of the Comet had begun. It's an intriguing tale, and a forbidden one, given how expertly it was encoded. Hmm. An interesting thing, but I'm not sure how much Shadowheart cares about Gith Yankee history. The Roads to Darkness, an epic tragedy about power, corruption, and loneliness. A lonely road. Thunder and lightning, enter Soreth. New sounds through damp and dark oppression break. Is, the, is it the foe that foul contemptuous heal? Or art thou, friend, a rescue from my lonely wake? Come out of love for me, not love for blood and steel. Enter Rezia. Rezia, how would I know? How would I know, Soreth? It's been so long, what do I know of you and you of me? Sereth. Wait, do you hear that sound? Enter Amphius. Amphius. What's this? Those figures so familiar both, but still you seem so strange. Sorth. It's Amphius. Rizia. Dear Amphius, what happened to your face? It's pale as death. Sorth. Your eyes are black as char. Amphius. And you? I saw your teeth, they're sharp as blades. And what is with this rose so slick with blood. What happened here? What happened to us all? Exeunt. End prologue. Act 1, ten years prior. The rest of the play tells the tale of three elven friends, their paths to power, and how corrupted, mad, and lonely they killed each other. Interesting. Handwritten letter. Why would you tame a bulette? Hey, we killed a bulette. Just because you found it near Myrna's grave doesn't mean it's a sign. A bulette is not a pet. So apparently Lore tried to tame a bulette. Apparently after her pet dog had died. To the Grey. A poem. Something about... Illithid Conqueror, it seems like. Do we have here? Mage's friend, Arcana and Religion plus one each. I don't have well Yeah, I don't really have a free ring slot. Will has Arcana. does nothing. Why is it barely above the floor? Strange. Useful for spying threats from afar, I suppose. Alright. 
Time to ascend one more time. I've seen as I was taught. You sound so damp and dark oppression, Ray. Is it the foul, the foul, contemptuous heel? You know these words. They are from the opening stanza of a play you found in this very tower. Or art thou friend, a rescue from my lonely wake? Crowd of love for me, not love for blood and steel. Uh, let's see, what is this place? So it seems as though he will only respond to lines from the poem. So let's see what happens. Guiding light, a ring that gives the light cantrip. However, it does have a hidden use. If I go ahead and put it on. I can go to the basement. Better fetch that. This way. Staff of Arcane Blessing. Bless grants an additional 1d4 to saving throws and weapon attack rolls, and an additional 2d4 to spell attack rolls. Wow. That makes Bless really good. I might want to use that myself. And then in his skills, the Sparks Wall. The wearer can't be electrocuted and grants resistance to lightning damage. This is pretty much exactly what I want for Will. So, poison resistance or Mage's Friend. Honestly, Mage's Friend is just not going to be useful in a combat situation. Although... Let's give the Ring of Poison resistance to Karlak and then keep and then keep the mage's friend on here. Oh, and then also the water sparklers for sure. And then the boots of aid and comfort back to Shadowheart. And there was a book in there that basically indicated that the owner of the tower has gone back to Baldur's Gate about ten years ago. On I go. See you. I never even noticed that was there. And I'd better take a peek. I mean, this stuff isn't marked as owned. So yeah, they don't even react to me taking it. Stool of Hill Giant Strength. 
So if you sit on this, this chair, I feel stronger just from sitting in it. The strength vanishes as soon as I stand. Curious. I want to see what everybody else says about it. One step at a time. Defender of the people. Two steps at a time. Holy. I feel powerful. Nice chair indeed. And poof. The power's gone. Go for a good meal. Let's go. Oh, 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 I like this. I feel strong as hell. Oh, power's gone as soon as I stand up. I think Astarian didn't react because he's got the Susser Bloom. So let's hand that off to Shadowheart temporarily. I wonder what the next move is. I must keep going. this I feel powerful oh, damn it it's gone Let's go. well but then don't burn yourself if you Boom. break it this could do some damage waste not yep and pick that up and sort of use it as an offhand weapon for for Astarian and suddenly he's got 19 strength so maybe Astarian will be my loot monkey but also plus 11 plus 5 to 10 plus 6 plus 5 to 12 Okay, the extra damage according to your strength isn't really reflected in here, so it would really be 9 to 16. Which is better than firing both hand crossbows. So I'm going to try that out with the Club of Hill Giant strength on Astarian. Well, so there's the question of what to do with Bernard. He does have a legendary action, Leaping Static. He can fire Leaping Static for the first foe that attacks it each round. Which is 3d8 lightning damage. And then three more bolts will leap from the target, electrifying as many as three other characters within six meters. So... And if you're going to attack them, then, you know, you're going to trigger that. And it's going to hit pretty much everybody. So we would probably want Elixirs of Lightning Resistance before we attack this guy if we were going to do that. He has Alertness himself, so he's going to have 7 to initiative. Uh, all income damage is reduced by 1. Static Discharge Aura. He is a construct, so okay. Uh, multi attack start. Uh, uh, let's see what's what with the static discharge roll. All constructs near Bernard deal an additional 3 to 8 lightning damage to weapon attacks. All others take 2 to 6 lightning damage each turn, and an additional 2 to 6 lightning damage when attacking Bernard. When the condition ends, Bernard is stunned for two turns. He does a lot of lightning damage. And I do not think that Shadowheart would assault him for no reason. No but she would be curious, I think, what other commands he has. <laughs> so I did that one. There is a light in every living thing. It's crawling towards the surface to survive. I'm in its way. It tramples everything. Don't kill the rest. 
Oh! That activated... Okay, I did not want to do this. Okay. Well, on the plus side, I guess I can see... How, how this bless goes. And then... I'm gonna go ahead and do a spiritual weapon. Right there. And I'm gonna move away. So, Karlak. Right, Karlak. Can you time. throw this guy? He is too heavy. Definitely gonna need a frenzy. And I want to stay away. Moving. When I throw, because go on. Oh, by scratch. Was he a resistant to all the things? And lightning, yeah. <laughs> and I do want to step away from the edge of it, though. Uh, let's have Will. This is gonna, this is gonna call for a potion of haste for sure. Move away from the Susser. Cast Darkness. I have Darkness, right? Oh, right. Darkness. Oh, nice. Let's turn this off. 75%. But ability drain dexterity, that appears to be working. Uh, let's see if I can flourish. For zero damage. Concentration broken on one hit point? Are you kidding me? He's off balance. He I did make him off balance, so that's good. But a miss anyway.
Okay. What other options do I have? Healing word. I'm gonna want that on him. I'll take care of you. Oh, that hurt him too. Radiating orb. Ability drain dexterity. He is about to go though. Okay, so let us start by throwing things. Oh. Let's start with the enrage throw. Enrage throw. Why is the path interrupted? Enrage throw. That's it. Let's have a Starion. Concentration. Shit. Fuck yes. Can she throw those? Yes. Oh, she doesn't have enough movement. So she'll just have to throw something at them. But Bernard is down, so I feel a lot better. Um, you... Just need to heal, I think. And get a w get behind other people. Hellish Rebuke. Let's use the Warlock slot. any spell slots left at all, so they could probably both use a decent bit of healing. And let's see if I can shove this thing. 
Uh, not really. Okay. Let's go. Do the improvised weapon. Use you to attack you. And then move over here. Can I throw you? at you and then and rage throw got it no surrender so what else can you this. accomplish? Not really a whole lot right now because you don't have the... Just use a potion, I guess. Time to move. No holding back. Path is interrupted. Finding my way. Okay, you've only got three hit points left, but this staff isn't really good for attacking. Still, 65% chance to kill it. I'll take it. And I will heal myself a little bit. And get the blessing. Oh, I should have done that first for the bless. Oh well. Uh, there's not much else for you to do at this time. Let's oh get Carlac. Path is interrupted. Why it's path interrupted? In position.
Okay, I think we're good now. Oh, there's a whole other one. Okay. Oh, well, I may not have intended to, but Bernard has been slain and ready to fight. And well, let's try this way. Shadowheart is completely out of spell slots. Well, Bernard had this Light of Creation, a halberd with that has plus 1d6 uh, lightning damage, but... Overcharge. Chance to stun the wielder unless it is a construct. There's an item later that will let us make use of this, which is pretty cool, but ultimately... It's this not really for our party. Poor Bernard. Didn't mean to, but it did. And since it took up all my spell slots... Oh, I need to go down one more. Since it took up all my spell slots, it is time to go rest. <laughs> A line with a fork and one, two, three dots. How was anyone meant to read this garbage? Want me to take a look? Uh, what are you doing? I was hoping to hear... Uh, sorry, I'll leave you alone. Wait, I'm sorry. You caught me by surprise, that's all. I've been tracing the scars on my back with my fingers, trying to read them by touch. But I can't. They may as well be written in Rashimi. Let me have a look. I... This isn't your problem, you know. I know. Now shut up and turn around. Fine. The jagged script is definitely infernal. The language of the hells. But you can't make out its meaning. And what can you see? I'm not sure. Hold still. I'll draw it for you. What in the hells? What did he do to me? It's a strange-looking poem. If it's a poem at all. Two centuries carrying this. And I can finally see it.
You really have no idea what this is? None at all. A Casador was only figuratively hellish. There were never any devils hanging about the crypt. Whatever he's left carved in my flesh, it's a mystery to me. Th thank you, by the way. This is... Well, it's something. We'll figure it out. I promise. Will we? How... sweet. I promised I'd be back. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. I see you've been using the powers the tadpole gives you. Good. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Halsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. Halsen mentioned that these tadpoles have been modified with magic. Yes. Halsen is correct. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Halsin knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. How do I destroy the source of the tadpole's magic? I am not sure yet. To find the answers, we must first find the source. These parasites are more than a lithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be Mind Flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. Why are you protecting me? Because I am just like you, and I need an ally. Just like you, I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. What is going on over there? The power I used to protect you. I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later, I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. 
Go. Our freedom depends on it. Another visit from the Golden Paladin. It said we'll get the answers we need about the tadpole if we infiltrate the cult. Then let's do just that. Indeed. You wish to speak? You're still faring well at camp, I hope. With such stimulating company? <laughs> Never better. I had another visit from that dream figure. I take it you did too. It claims that if we infiltrate the heart of the cult that's giving out these parasites, we'll find the answers we're looking for. It gave me another gift, too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. Rather generous, if you ask me. Whatever is at the heart of this cult, we have to find it by any means possible. And while we're at it, we can see how many more of these little worms we can harvest. Now, was there anything else? Oh, you can feed on me tonight if you like. Darling, I thought you'd never ask. I'll see you tonight. I had another dream last night. The visitor came to me and ordered me to penetrate the heart of the very cult that's spreading the infection. It gave me a tadpole gift too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. I suppose it hoped this would help. At first, I thought we should avoid these gifts no matter what advantage we gain. And yet, I can't help recall the words of my father. The best plan is the one that works. These powers could be enough to edge us towards victory. We need these powers to infiltrate the cult. This is the plan that works. Very well. If it's mind games these parasites wish to play, we'll play. And we'll win. I've been dreaming of our enigmatic visitor again. She told me our purpose was to take on this cult of the Absolute, to infiltrate its ranks and bring it down from the inside. She even offered me greater powers, the result of some manipulation of the tadpole's psionic abilities. Given the magnitude of what we're up against, I see no harm in considering the benefit this offer might afford us. Could be the only way to reach this source in one piece. You're right. We should use every means at our disposal, even unsavory ones. As existential evils go, the Absolute certainly seems an adversary worth holding in its tracks. Any opportunities for us to indulge our tadpole's capabilities are hardly on the same scale. Trifles, when one considers the bigger picture. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and do my daily buffs and then I will see you next time.